can you feel the fear? Are you afraid? My husband and I were planning on a camping trip to Florida, where my sister lives. I'll be calling him husband through all of this because he prefers I didn't name him. The National Forest we were going to was on a way back, so we decided that it was a good round trip to first go stay with her for the night, then venture out into the woods and set up camp. I know it was some enclosed protected area that had park rangers and all that, but I just felt excited to be out into the woods, thinking I was alone with my husband and all alone with whatever could be lurking in the woods at night. Maybe like a ferocious trash panda or an evil squirrel. We had a little pop-up tent that uses bendy lines to set up, so we were only going to be a thin material away from all that. So we packed up and left for my sister's house first. It was a really long, boring drive, so we were stopping every so often to get out and stretch ourselves and look for some place to eat. Not only was most of the places that we stopped at complete dumps, but there were surprisingly a lot of rude people everywhere we went. Once we got into Florida, that changed though. I think we stopped in Tallahassee first, and immediately noticed the attitude change. I was wanting to move here with my sister, and I think I found an excuse. We arrived in Tampa at my sister's place. Long story short, we sat there and had a great time having dinner and drinks, bitching about old times, and bitching about people we used to know. Just like we always did when we got together. Come to think of it, that's all we did. So we spent the night there because she had a guest room. And that gave us one last good night of sleep before we went into the woods for our adventure that I was still excited about. By a good night's sleep, I mean I tossed and giggled all night while my husband tried to sleep. And he couldn't because I kept talking to him like a child. I regret nothing. I'm serious, I had way much to drink. There's nothing like actually being able to be yourself around your own family. I suggest it to anyone who's reading this. The next afternoon when we finally got up, I didn't feel much like giggling and carrying on anymore. I was a little bit sick and still wanted to go. We packed up the little bit that we used at my sister's and we left. I was complaining the entire way, mostly for the joke of it, but I actually did have a little bit of a hangover. My husband, however, seemed like it didn't phase him. He knows me, I'll complain hard, but I won't ruin anything we're doing. We decided on a national forest called Hillsborough River State Park. If you've ever been there, it's this little place off a nowhere highway between Tampa and a place called Zephyr Hills. So, to my knowledge, this is one of the only parks in the area. We pulled in and almost immediately started setting up. We didn't explore first or anything, we just set up. That's the fun part for me is the building the shelter. Oh, and basically, there was a ton of other people there. I was severely disappointed, but I couldn't complain. They were there for the same reason, I assume. The one guy we set up next to actually lived out there, though. I get that you like being out there, but living out there? No thanks. We talked to our woodsy neighbor for a little bit and found that he was a really nice guy. My husband and I went off into the woods and one of the little trails that they had out there for hiking. We eventually found one that led to a river that runs all the way through Florida. I told my husband to throw me in so I could float to the sea, but he didn't think that was such a good idea. So we walked around with each other and just enjoyed the woods and each other and the very few people that we saw here and there every few hours. Really, it was like you went into the campsite and there were people everywhere. You go off into the trails and stuff and there's nobody. It was like the twilight zone. Keeping my strange fantasies to myself, we went back to the campsite after it had already gotten dark. Oh, and if you come down here, bring some bug repellent. We didn't. We regret it. The first night with this guy next to us, Donnie, was great. We had shared a fire pit and we were just hanging out with him. 
It was just him. And no one else around the area seemed to care at all that we were a little bit noisy for a while. We tried to keep it down for the people sleeping, but higher pitch voices carry farther. So all the excitement wore me out after about 1 or 2 a.m. I couldn't quite tell what time it was since I hadn't checked the time at all, and I don't think I was even going to. I went into the tent and passed out before I could even get into my sleeping bag. It was kind of comical. My husband said he did the same a while after I went, but he chose not to get into his bag. It was a bit hot. I don't know what time in the morning it was, but I woke up to Donnie scratching on my side of the tent. He asked if I wanted coffee as my husband snored away. I thought it was a bit strange that he would wake me up first, seeing as I was the one that was farthest away from his campsite. I told him no thanks and I fell back asleep. I guess he got the hint and went away. Then in the middle of my dream, I woke up and thought it was also strange that he only woke me up and not even tried to wake my husband up. Once the afternoon rolled around, my in and out state of sleep finally broke and I was like a cat that had just been scared awake. My husband woke up shortly after, but I went over to Donnie and I just said, I'll take that coffee now. He made the comment, I guess you guys are usually night owls, huh? I confirmed that to definitely be the case and had some of the worst coffee I'd ever tasted with him. Seriously, it was pretty gross. I told him it was gross. But he laughed and said he couldn't taste it at all. After my husband finally got up, he drank the rest of the coffee and we ate a little of the canned food we brought with us. Not too long after we'd gotten up, the sky started getting dark and I felt my energy level rise. I was finally awake and ready to do stuff. I told my husband that we should go exploring the woods tonight, and he liked that idea. Spoilers, we used a combination of moonlight and some really weak flashlights to get in and out of the woods. It was extremely fun. Once we got back to the campsite, Donnie was already asleep and the night was still young. We explored the woods a bit more until I got tired and we headed back. We decided to spend a nice little evening inside the tent in the pitch black dark, listening to the sounds and quietly talking with one another. All of a sudden, I felt a poke of something sharp on my back, through the tent wall. I squeaked and jumped up, spinning around to look towards the wall. It was a reaction. I know I couldn't actually see anything. I told my husband I felt something sharp poke me in the back. He pulled his flashlight out and unzipped the tent. We looked around and there was nothing out there. This was the part where people usually argue about whether it really happened or not. But we didn't do that, this is reality. We looked around the tent and then went back inside. This time we didn't zip the tent back up, but we faced the opening. A few minutes later, I heard footsteps a little way away from us and kept an ear on it. I listened to them until they were close by, and then turned a flashlight and ran out to see what the hell it was. It was Donnie sneaking around with a stick towards our tent. I got a little pissed and told him that that wasn't cool. My husband really didn't get that pissed off, but he did back me up, saying that he thought it was a little dirty for him to do that. Donnie, with clear disappointment on his face, told us that he was just trying to prank us. I told him I didn't like that kind of thing, and not to do it again. He apologized to me and I told him I'd forget about it. He went back to bed, and my husband and I did as well, since it was already getting the early hours of the morning. The next afternoon, Donnie didn't wake us or make us coffee. Not like I was expecting him to, but he had just kind of this sour feeling attitude. He didn't outright say anything mean or do anything. He just kind of kept quiet and didn't talk much. We really didn't want to blame him for anything, and we sat down and tried to make conversation. But he seemed like he really didn't want that. We left him be and went off on another little adventure by ourselves. We really enjoyed ourselves and said that we probably should stay another night after this. After it got dark, we were still in the woods without our flashlights. I was getting the I'm scared shakes, but I was kind of actually enjoying that. 
My husband was internally freaking out because he could barely see anything himself, he told me. The woods still had moonlight, but not really much since the clouds were blocking most of it. This is what we came out here for, though. So we were somewhat lost in the woods, trying to find our way back. Not our best moment. But we eventually found our way back out, back to the site where Donnie seemed to have gone to bed already. I told my husband I kind of felt bad for getting on to him last night, but I didn't come out here for pranks. We decided to sit in our tent, in the dark again, and talked. Oddly enough, we talked about our first times camping, but neither of us could really remember the details. All of a sudden, our tent just collapsed on top of us, and I heard one of the rods snap, and I felt it puncture my leg. The rods were fiberglass or something because they can really bend, but if they snap, they get extremely sharp. I screamed and cried because there was something in my leg and it was very painful. My husband was trying to find his way out of the tent and cussing loudly, and I could hear laughing going on outside. My husband hears me crying and finds a flashlight to see why. He fucking absolutely flipped when he saw the rod in my leg and quickly ripped it out to tie it up with his shirt and went outside to Donnie. I could hear my husband yelling at him and cussing and all that. I finally got the breath I needed to scoot out of the tent and saw what Donnie had done and what my husband did to Donnie. Apparently this asshole had thrown a five gallon bucket of cement through the tent and he had missed me by mere inches. Donnie claimed that it was another prank and he threw it in a safe area of the tent. Well, he didn't hit either of us with the bucket, but his stupid action got me stabbed in the leg. My husband ripped him across the face with a solid knuckle and knocked him cold. My husband said that we were packing up and leaving right then, and I didn't have any arguments. I wanted to get away from that psycho as soon as possible before he woke up. My husband made me sit in the car with my leg elevated and wouldn't let me help pack but he got it all done by himself in a few minutes and we were out. The first thing we did was head to a hospital to get my leg looked at. The doctor cleaned the wound out and said it didn't actually go that deep and I wouldn't need to get any stitches or anything. I ended up getting those flat patches and keeping it clean. It healed up just fine. So that's what happened in the woods and I'm sure Donnie won't be pranking anyone else that comes in after we did. I don't care what you call it or how you look at it, that concrete bucket, wherever he got it, could have killed one of us or at the very least broken several bones. I told my husband on the way back to my sister's place that I hope he broke his fucking jaw. He did say that he felt something in there crumble, but no telling. We told my sister everything that had happened, and she asked if we had formed the police. We told her no, we took care of it ourselves. We stayed at her house another night, and we went back on the long journey home the next day. Truthfully, I think he was still pissed off that I'd gotten to him and he wanted to hurt me. That's why the bucket went my way. When I think back on it, I get scared when the realization hits me that I could have been hit in the head and died that night. Or even worse, my husband got hit and died. I wouldn't have been able to live on then, and I don't know what I would have done. It's best for me not to think on it. If you go out to the woods like that to camp, please be safe and don't set up camp next to a freak psycho. I'm a male, pretty short and 22 years old. I have a friend with a gigantic backyard that leads out to some fenced off woods that his mother keeps telling him that he shouldn't go in because she thought the public property was illegal to go into at night. It wasn't though. We still go out there sometimes. So what we did to get around this was tell her that we were going to set up a double wide tent that he had in the woods behind the house. So she'd think that we were just camping there. What we actually did was we set up a decoy because I had another tent which was smaller and could easily be put up and tore down. It's not like she would have checked anyway, but we were paranoid at the time. So we set up the tent that night and then waited until all the lights had turned off in the house, which was a really long distance away. 
We had to use binoculars to even see. So once she had gone to bed, it was adventure time. We zipped up the tent and grabbed the extra one from my car. We set up by crawling under a broken part of the fence that we had found and explored that first part of the woods. The woods were mostly open in this area, so we were able to mark a good path through and memorize the area. Once we had that down, we moved a little further into the thicker part of the woods. We found a mostly large clearing with a little brush on the ground we could easily use as cushion for the bottom of the tent, so we set up there. After all that was said and done, my friend and I started hearing the freaky and unnerving sounds of the forest around us, as if they had unmuted. The sounds of the owls were creepy enough, but then there was this ominous wind that we heard as if there was a hurricane going off a few miles away. I guess that's just the wind blowing through the trees, but it still sets a freaky atmosphere. We began to explore and tie markers around the woods so we didn't get lost. I love exploring like this at night because you know you're pretty much safe, but it's still the fact that it's creepy and it's naturally like that. We discovered a few really unnerving things though. There were people back here before us, obviously, because of the small amount of trash and things that we had found. It was creepy to think that someone might be out here with us, but it was also very unlikely at the time. It was at night, however. We wanted to see how far we could go into the woods before it felt right to go back. I might be curious, but I'm not stupid. I know when to stop and when that's enough. We went a little farther, making sure that we could still see the markers from either end, using each other to mark out the distance of sight. We got to this clearing leading to a river and had to turn back because at the time there was no way to cross. We headed back and thank god that we put the markers up because the woods looked completely different coming from the other way. We got back to our campsite to sit in the tent and collect ourselves before we built a small fire and headed back out. I think by that time, it was around 9 or 10 p.m., not really sure. We built a small fire with small mounds of dirt to keep it from going anywhere, and quickly cooked some food over it. We got a little bit lazy and sat there and talked for a little while, before we decided to get up and walk off the food in another direction that ultimately ended up being a giant wall of brush that we couldn't find a way to get around. After exploring that way, I think we both got a little tired, so we sat in the tent, playing cards for a bit. Walking for that long can make your feet sharply hurt if you're wearing shit shoes. A few hours later, because we always lose track of time when we play games, of any kind, we began hearing something rustle in the woods nearby. We went to go check it out, and I busted out the floodlight that I bought that I'm not really actually happy with because it only lasts for like 10 minutes, but it makes the woods look like daytime. My friend had a mag light, so that doubled as a weapon, which actually didn't help us in any way. We looked around in the pitch black woods with a few bright ass beams until we spotted him. Some guy that looked to be in his mid 40s was standing there in the woods and before I could fully finish memorizing his description, he ran full speed at me. I backed up out of sheer muscle memory, and the guy grabbed onto me as we both fell to the ground. My friend with the maglite heavy metal weapon kicked the guy off me and slid into the leaves and fell himself. I watched as the weird attacker got up and ran off into the bushes and disappeared into the night. Shaken and confused, I look over to my friend and ask what the hell was that, hoping at any point that he'd have any more information than I did. I guess he didn't because he followed up with a classic I don't know. I don't know what made us shrug it off, but we actually decided that we were going to take our time to pull the tent down and pack up before leaving. I don't know how we were so calm, but we were. Or maybe we weren't, I don't really know, but we acted that way. We acted like we had future knowledge of this being only a one-time thing. The woods didn't seem as creepy anymore, but maybe that's because the wind sound died down a bit and the owls had finally shut up. 
We walked out of the woods and back into his backyard. The rest of the night we sat there in his tent with enough light to keep us in the right mind and tried to come up with scenarios as to why that guy was even out there. We even had to, at one point, confirm to each other that we had seen a guy back there because we were both beginning to doubt what we had seen. I was still a little sore on the lower back because that's where I think I'd hit a stick on the way down. So that was proof enough for me that it actually happened and we didn't have a shared hallucination. I think from now on we'll be much more careful when we go out there. We need to stay on guard and actually use our mag light if someone's coming at us and not hesitate. We didn't let this ruin our fun though. Yeah, it was a freaky experience, but we still got out of there. And we aren't going to let some weirdo out in the woods stop us. Did you like that video? Well, there's more where that came from. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and follow me on Instagram. Links below in the description. Also, if you have a story to submit to the channel, link will be in the description for r slash sn stories. I'll see you next time.